In this video, we're gonna be looking at one of the viewer's inventions. He's asked me to evaluate it and give him some tips. It's the story of my life that just when I start posting lots of videos, Google goes ahead and breaks YouTube. When I first came up with the idea for this show, which originally was supposed to be a TV show, by the way, the concept was that we were gonna actually pull ideas from people's heads and get them to really think about how to turn them into a real tangible product. And I think these last few videos have been doing a good job of helping you guys do that. Let me know what you think. I'm really excited about this because one of the viewers has asked me to review their invention. You and me, Miles, we're trying to make you a product that you can sell. It's called the Rodless Reel. If you remember back in the 70s, most of you are actually too young to remember this, but if you remember back in the 70s, Ron Popeil had a little fishing rod that he advertised on TV, and that's what this reminds me of. So it's really cool. Let's look at the Ron Popeil video. It's the fishing invention of the century, Popeil's Pocket Fisherman. Compact enough to fit glove compartment or your pocket. It's rod, reel, line, bobber, hook, the whole thing. Just flip up nylon rod and you can cast like a pro anywhere. Expert or amateur will love Pocket Fisherman and does it catch fish. Can you think of a more exciting gift for Junior or Dad at just $19.95? For those of you that don't know, Google Plus was shut down last week, and in the process, it took YouTube with it. So that's a real 70s product, and that's what's so exciting about the rodless reel and my new friend Miles' invention. He's come up with something that uses modern design on an old idea, and that's where the potential really lies for his product. Alan. Yep. I've talked about this in a lot of previous videos, but we're gonna pick on him. So my first suggestion is, he's got it listed on his website for $129. The problem is he's showing 3D renderings and you can tell that it's plastic and I'm not so sure that a product like that is going to demand a $129 purchase price, but I could be wrong. And I have suggested to Miles that he start thinking about a Kickstarter campaign. If he posts a plastic version of it on Kickstarter and it doesn't sell at 129, then he knows he has to either lower his price or improve the quality. A word about Kickstarter and working prototypes. If you look at the rodless reel, it's obvious that Miles has done his homework and he's already to the point where he's ready to build a working prototype. He even has one he's using in the video. I wish he had showed us it a little closer. A weird thing's been happening on this channel. I'm getting less views, but a lot more people commenting, asking me questions, and engaging in the videos. It's a very strange thing to see. I really appreciate it, so please leave lots of comments below. So once Miles has his product that looks finished, he's gonna have a plastic product that you see in fishing tackle stores and places like that. And I do imagine he could sell them in mass quantities to the big fishing stores and sporting goods stores around the country and even the world. So Miles, if you wanna do that, I think you can. It's just that $129 may be a problem. If you don't have the money to really think about doing large volume at a lower price, then you may wanna talk about what we've been talking about through emails, and that is moving the product up in quality. And not, that's not to say that there's anything wrong with the quality of what you built. Personally, I really like it, and I told you that. If you were to get feedback from one of those invention submission places, they would just tell you it's a great idea, charge you a fee, make you up a brochure and say, let's get it out there to people that'll wanna make it. And that would be it. And I guarantee you, every person that comes to them, they say is a great idea, because all they're doing is trying to sell them and their dream to them. What I'm talking about doing is moving it up in perceived quality with the type of finished materials that you're using. And that would include a combination of plastic parts and machined parts. Now, I know you've also mentioned to me that that can get expensive, and that is true. It can get expensive 
but not for the upfront cost. You'll find that the injection molding is actually more expensive. Remember what I said about thinking about 100 products. You want to make 100 pieces of your product. And if you're going to do that, why not think about adding some machine parts to it and a cheaper mold? Come up with a mold of a couple of parts that are only a few thousand dollars to invest in, and then use all the other parts in it that are machined. So it'll be a combination of machine parts and also plastic parts. The end product will look really quality. Now, if you look at some of my previous videos, you will see that a lot of times when I build stuff, I'm using machined parts. I really like the look, but I also know that people are willing to spend more money on a per unit basis. Going back to that previous video, think about 100 pieces. And let's talk about Kickstarter in that 100 pieces. You're only going to have to build one working prototype to launch a Kickstarter. You can do that with your plastic product if you want to try, or you can do that with your CNC machine product and then see how that one goes. But I have a better idea. I haven't gotten into this much in the recent videos, but I talk about the power of threes. The power of threes in inventing is interesting. Miles, you already have one product, so why not make a cheap version of it in plastic, but then also make a better version of it that you can sell for, let's say, $150, $180, $200 or more. Gold anodizing looks really nice with red, by the way. Red, gold, black anodizing and some plastic in it or maybe no plastic at all in that particular one. Sell it for 200 bucks, but let the consumer choose. I've learned this lesson over time, and it's a really hard lesson to grasp. We all tend to think that we know what our customers are willing to spend, but never underestimate what they are willing to spend. You would be surprised at some of the orders I get for my products. I'm not talking about $500, I'm not talking about $1,000. It is very common for me to get $5,000, $6,000, $10,000 orders on my website from one customer. So think about that. And I'm not even gonna tell you how much the customer is willing to spend when they're buying them in bulk. We are talking about orders in the tens of thousands of dollars at a time. And here's another little secret. It doesn't take you any more time to put a shipping label on one unit as it does a hundred. The whole idea here is to increase your revenue. So give the customer multiple options, not just one product in Kickstarter, not just one product on your website. Take that same product and make multiple versions of it. It might be something as simple as adding a couple of extra cavities into your mold and then you'll have different pieces that you can put together to make different products. I have a feeling you haven't thought about that and neither has anybody else on this channel. This is a trick that I've used for years and I'm surprised other people don't do it too. You could design and put all your time and effort into one product, software for me for electronics, the circuit board, but then I can change that board, switch the software around over a couple of days, maybe a little bit of the design, and I can reuse that same design over and over and over, slap a new injection molded case onto the same electronic board and come up with different products constantly. Did it for years and it was a very, very efficient way to take R&D and quickly make new products. So Miles, that's what I'm suggesting to you. Start thinking about how to take that product, make it look finished on the plastic version, and then come up with other versions that are the pro version or the artistic version or the, I don't know, special release. Maybe there's only a hundred of them made that are really expensive. I used to be a fisherman. I used to have a boat here in California. I used to buy all kinds of rods and reels. So remember, fishing guys love really fancy looking rods and they're willing to spend the money. Don't discount that. You will be surprised about the number of people that are willing to spend more. Miles, I love your product. I really do. I'm excited about this. I'm actually honored that you came to me and asked me for feedback.